Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Over the past few weeks, I have been building a dining room table that my son designed. And I have done four different videos showing different steps and some tips and techniques along the way. Well, I decided to be able to put one video together that shows from the beginning to the end of the entire dining room table. The nice thing about it is, guys, you haven't seen the finished product, and I want to be able to show you that today. So let's get started. Now this is my son who designed the table and we're starting off with this with building the frame of the table itself. Then we're using two by fours to be able to cut and make this frame. Now the interesting thing about it is we're going to be cutting these at a 85 degree angle or basically that's five degrees of an angle on this ribbon that we're going to make and everything is going to be related to this five degree angle. So the frame that goes around the top of the table as well as the legs, everything are going to be beveled at a five degree angle. After my son cut all of the two by fours to length at the miter saw, it was time to be able to get the members cut down to the correct size. Now these two by fours are going to be cut down to three inches by the inch and a half and I'm going to be putting this five degree bevel on all of the members of this frame. Once that is done, then I have to be able to make it where they will join together. And to be able to do that, I'm just going to use the rabbit joint and cut these out. Now I always cut this inside portion first. That establishes the length. And then I can nibble away at the um, rest of the wood and cut this out. Now remember, the bevel is on the 5 degrees, is on the outside. The other part is still at the 90 degree angle. I want to point out too that, yes, I could have put a stacked data set in, but for the time that it would take to be able to switch them in and out on this table saw, it was really just as quick to be able to just do it this way with the regular saw blade in the, uh, in the table saw. Now here's a close-up look at the finished rabbit cut. Now you'll notice the five degree angle there on the end and also on the outside edge has a five degree angle also. The pencil line that you see there was just a reference and it's not really important to see where that is off. Now once that one end was done then I just had to repeat the process on the other side. And again I cut that inside shoulder first and then I can nibble away at the rest of it and it goes actually fairly quickly and I can maintain a good accurate cut being able to do it this way. Once I have all of these rabbit cuts done, it's time to be able to join it together. To be able to show you how this goes together, I just want to be able to stand these up together so that you can see it and exactly how it fits. So there's a five degree angles on the outside on both directions. And with this angle of the camera, you can see that. And then if you look the other direction, you can see that five degree angle there. Now this part was easy. It was when we needed to attach the leg that became a little more difficult. But with everything cut, it's time to be able to assemble the actual frame. And this is really the backbone of the whole entire table. And because of the five degree angle, I needed to use those blocks cut at a five degree angle also to be able to put equal pressure on all of the glue joints. Now these two boards create the backbone. They are an inch and a half wide by three inches. And they're glued together, of course, with the Typhon glue. And I have the end members that are receiving this and they are dadoed in also. Now this entire section was all glued at one time and of course they had to make sure that it was perfectly square. 
Now it was time to cut the legs and I had shown this process in another video. So this is just going to be a real quick summary where we cut the legs to the length that we needed. We had those beveled at the five degree angle and then we had to use this special jig to be able to cut this little bit of an offset so that it would fit into the frame of the table itself. Now we'll put the video link up top to be able to have me refer to the full video on making these legs. But it was an interesting challenge to be able to do this. If you recall, if you saw the other video, you know that this jig was set at a five degree angle in two different directions. And then I was able to cut this remaining angle that was literally at the 90 degrees. And it was important to have this angle exact. Now this little sliver of wood was not much to be coming off, but it was critical to make sure that it was done correctly so that the legs would actually fit into the frame. So you can see this little sliver of wood, there wasn't much to remove, but that's that five degree angle that we were talking about. That is what really made building this dining room table a challenge, is to deal with all of the five degree angles. So here's a close-up look at the finished table leg where all of the angles have been cut and it's ready to assemble. And don't forget to check out the video on this jig that I had to design and make to be able to accomplish the cut necessary to be able to make this whole thing work. And this jig did work flawlessly. We did have to experiment a little bit and add some extra bracing and clamps, but all in all, it worked well. Now to be able to dry fit these legs in place and that little small angle that we cut, you can see how it fits there. That turned out just perfect. But we're not finished. We still have to bolt the legs to this table frame. And to do that, again, it had to be at a five degree angle. So the drill press actually was raised up and you can see the wood underneath there. So that was at a five degree angle. And of course, everything else had to get aligned. So that took a little bit of a challenge to get set up. But once it was done, it was time to go ahead and drill these legs. Of course, this is a pilot hole that we're drilling. The actual full size hole was actually done in a moment because these are the two bolts that actually hold the legs in. Because if you ever have to move this dining room table, you want to be able to remove the uh, legs from the table. Now this operation involved drilling the holes for the threaded inserts. That little block of wood, again, provided the five degree angle that was necessary. This is the brass insert that we're using to be able to insert into this frame to accept the bolts. To be able to install those, it's easiest just to use a short bolt, screw it in, and then with that screwed into position, you can use the impact driver and screw it directly into the hole that is made. And again, it's important to be able to have the angle correct, but we've already drilled it at the five degree angle. So this part becomes pretty easy. Now I'm taking my time on inserting these uh, threaded inserts because I want them to be flush with the surface of the wood. And it would be very easy just to be able to go too far. Once it's inserted, then just reverse the uh, impact drive and the bolt comes right out. It's time now to be able to attach this side frame to the end frame and to be able to secure that in place. We're using dowel rods. I think this is the strongest best method to be able to use. And this is a quarter inch oak dowel rods that we're using to be able to secure that end position, of course, using plenty of glue. Clamp it in place. Once that's dry, it makes for a very, very solid joint. And of course, this is done on both ends. And I actually like the look of the dowel rods there. I think that's going to create a very nice effect for this table. To be able to add some extra strength to the corners, we wanted to use metal brackets. There was none available that we could find that were the three inches. 
So we just had to take what was available and cut them down to size. And then from there, we were just able to screw those into position in each of the corners. This very old Yankee screwdriver has seen a lot of, of use in the past few weeks. And it's good to be able to bring this out and utilize it for this type of an application. I still think it works better than the drill. Okay, the glue is dry, the clamps are removed, and it's time to cut the ends off of the dowel rod and get those flush with the side of the wood. Any little bit left over that's going to be there, of course, will just get sanded off. Now, I don't have those fancy saws. I just have an old hand saw, but you know what? That works just as well as those new fancy ones that you see people use all the time. And if you look at this up close, without any sanding, I think it did quite well. The same process was done with the table legs. We actually cut these at the proper angle again, glued them in position, and then of course we're going to use the dowel rods. And this time we're using a half inch dowel rod, and that little spacer block is there at that five degree angle so that we can keep the drill going exactly where we need to have it. We're going to drill this as deep as we can, and then we'll be able to put the dowel rods in. Now doing this type of a technique actually works real well because everything is clamped and there's no chance of anything moving or sliding. So that makes for the alignment of these holes for the dowel rods where they're going to be perfect. Once those are done, it's time for glue and lots of glue. We're putting glue on all the dowel rods, on the ends of all the boards, and then it'll be time to clamp everything back into position. The good thing about it is the dowel rods themselves will help align everything because the way we drilled them, it will help create a perfect alignment and actually make this phase go a little bit easier because with the glue on the boards, it does have a tendency to want to slide around and the dowel rods prevent that. At this point, the legs are bolted in and again, those are bolted in with the threaded inserts. The angle that we had cut turned out to be perfect. That gives me my five degree angle on the leg itself. And then if we turn around in this direction, you can see the five degree angle going in this way. As far as the bottom, you can see the dowel rods that will hold this base into position and there are no nails. This is just the dowel rods and the glue that holds this and that should be a very, very strong joint. I want to give you one quick look at the finished table legs and this is the bottom of it and you can see the dowel rods there that are pinned that are hold that base in position. This creates a very strong joint and it should last for many years. So with this part done, it's time to move on and get the drawers cut out. Now I had shown this in another video, but we're cutting these side rails uh, out and those rails are going to be saved. And I'm using the blue tape here to prevent the tear out of the wood. Now I'll also put a link to this video where I made the drawers to be able to have a refer to that. So this is just a real quick summary of everything we did at this stage of building this dining room table. It was real helpful having my son in the shop for this part because this would be very easy to be able to bind the saw blade and you certainly don't want to do that. So he was able to hold this to before and support it so I was able to cut it through and have a nice clean cut. Now it's time to add the extra bracing in necessary to support the end of the dining room table. We're using the pocket hole screws to be able to secure this in position, of course, with the glue to be able to hold this. It was also important to make sure that this member was good and straight and square to the table because this became the support for the drawer slides that we're going to be installing next. But you can see we used plenty of glue here to be able to hold that and just screwed it in place. I like the pocket hole system for this because it makes it where it's a good strong joint and I don't have any nails or anything on the outside. 
Next, it's time to put in the drawer slides. And to do that, this is only a three inch space. So I want those drawer slides to be right in the middle. So I'm using my tri-square to be able to mark a line to get that alignment just right. At the table saw, we cut all of the members needed to be able to build the drawers themselves. Now we use a stop block to make sure that everything was exactly the same size. And this is a half inch piece of plywood that we're using to make these drawers. Now keep in mind, I only have a total of three inches. So these drawers are very, very shallow. But at the same time, they're also very big. But this is what was needed for this table. Now it's time to assemble the drawers themselves. And we're doing this a little bit different. In this case, I'm using the rabbit joints for the outer edges as I have done on many of them. But in this time, I'm putting the drawer bottom directly on top of this frame and then stapling it with the one inch 18 gauge nails. This proved to be a very effective method and it made sure that everything was flat and square so that these large drawers would work smoothly. In the numerous videos that I have done showing how drawers are being built, each time I have used a different method. The methods sometimes vary just because I wanted to show you a different way, and other times, such as this case, I needed to accomplish a specific task. The task in this one being a very simple drawer to be able to build, assemble, and ensure that it remained perfectly square so that it would work smoothly using these drawer slides. Now to actually install the drawers into the table itself, I did this upside down. And I don't think I have ever seen anyone install drawers upside down. But this was a perfect opportunity to do it, and I think it was critical to be able to do that. Now use the spacer to be able to hold the drawers off of the um, surface. But I wanted that to be a quarter of an inch down from the top. I don't want it to hit the tabletop itself. So that spacing was critical. Once that was established, everything else was simple to be able to screw in the drawer slides into the drawers itself. At this point in the construction, we're putting in the two screws. We're putting the first screw in the very front of the drawer and we're putting the middle one in. Once we can have this table turned over and pull the drawers out, we'll be able to add the third screw in there. And it's important to have all three screws on each of the sides. Now let's flip this over, set it down on the floor and take a look at it. The base is completely done with the drawers installed. The only thing that's left, of course, is to put the face of the drawers on. But I wanted to be able to show you just how easy these drawers open and close. For a drawer this size, they work extremely smooth. So this has turned out to be an absolute fantastic addition to a dining room table. This is going to provide a lot of storage to be able to put any type of tablecloths, silverware, anything that you want into these drawers. I think this was a great, great addition. To put the face onto the drawers, just put a block down to clamp in position so that drawer face would go exactly where it needed to go. And then it's just a matter of screwing it in. If you look closely at the video, you can see where I cut down the face to make it smaller. Originally it was three inches and I needed to take about three sixteenths of an inch off so that it would not hit the tabletop itself. Very simple process, having that block hold it exactly the height, and you'll notice the grain of the wood matches perfectly. That's part of the look that we're trying to create. If I could eliminate that line and still have a drawer open, I would. Originally, we had planned on using the 2x8s and 2x10s for the tabletop, but with construction grade material, it just wasn't going to happen. There was too much of warp in the wood to make it work. So to be able to change our plan a little bit, we used the three quarter inch plywood, plus we used this premium pine to give the exact same look 
as if we were using the regular 2x10s, 2x8s to be able to make the tabletop. This turned out to be very effective because it made for a very flat tabletop that worked good. The only thing that I needed to do is add this edge trim that I'm cutting on the table saw now. Once I had that installed, it was just a matter of sanding everything and it made it look like it was a solid wood top. You couldn't even tell there was plywood there. The next step that I wanted to be able to do is add a 45 degree chamfer to the edge all the way around this tabletop. To do that, I'm using my trim router and a 45 degree chamfer bit. The nice thing about this, it eases the edge so it'll actually help protect it from damage over time. I had thought about using a roundover, but I really like the look of the chamfered edge better. Once the router was done, I want to give you a close-up look at what that looks like. I think that looks a lot better than having a rounded edge there because that, I think, goes along with the design much better than, uh, than a rounded look. And at the same time, it'll still protect the edge from a lot of wear and tear. The last step on the construction of this table is to add these inch and a half L brackets. These brackets have the purpose of being able to secure the tabletop to the table base. And this ensures that it doesn't slide, there's no movement, and this will be a very effective way to be able to hold the top in position. Now I have two at each end, and that should be sufficient to be able to hold this in place. And the nice thing about it is, should you have to move this table in the future, this actually will be very easy to be able to do. You can just unscrew the four screws, slip off the top, unscrew the bolts for the legs, and this is ready to transport. But to give you a look now at the finished table, you tell me guys, I think this turned out to be a beautiful table, to be literally a construction grade pine type of a table and it fits to the core in his house perfectly. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.